We had blackberries 30 feet into the trees. We have, I mean, wow. it was just had consumed buildings. Yeah. yeah. We, there were buildings that we didn't know were there until Old weeks outhouse. after we moved on. What? A two-seater outhouse, no less, which wait, wait. there's a whole other <laughs> thing there. They roam around and do chicken things. And what fight, are chicken they things? They fight and they eat yeah. bugs and they eat seeds. And Get yeah. stuck on the other side of the fence, falls into a hole. Yeah. Those are the chicken things. Yeah. To be able to have someone who works off farm yeah. help support my addiction to farming and enable me. Addiction, <laughs> enabling. <laughs> All right, keep going. Everybody, welcome to the show. This is a show, well, it's a show about tenacity, mostly, because when people decide that they want to get something out into the world, they want to share something with the world, it could be art, music, it could be a small business, you're going to start cutting people's hair, or you're going to know, develop the, 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 the only oil they use to manufacture a particular type of screwdriver which is a real thing, and um, I don't know why I know that that's a real thing. But if you're that type of person and you freak out and you're not quite sure what you need to do next and you make mistakes and you fall on your face, then this is a great show for you to watch. Tonight, we will have Blackberry Bog Farm on, and it's three people started a farm. You've got to give up so much of normal life to start a farm in Oregon, and that's what they did. And I'm excited to talk to them about it. As always, we'll also be drinking because that's what you do when you talk about f***ing up. And tonight, we don't have Jack Sanders with us, and that's sad, but we have Sarah from Lady J, and she's fantastic. Wes Yow, she's been on the show before. She's hilarious. I love her. I'm so glad that she's with us. Let's get cracking. We're ready to go. Yeah. Sounds good across the Sounds board. Good. Everything's good. All right. Okay. Cool, cool. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, we got an exciting show uh, for everybody tonight. I'm really, really excited to talk about it, mostly because I'm from Idaho and don't know anything about the stuff that we're going to be talking about. We've got uh, the crew from uh, Blackberry Bog Farm, Correct. right? We've got Scott and Bonnie and Andrew. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, do you... First off, tell me a little bit about the farm. So the farm is uh, it's 31 acres um, in Clatsop County, Oregon, which okay. is where Astoria, Oregon is located. Uh, um, that so, everybody knows when you say Astoria, Oregon. Oh, because everybody. They, we know they, why. They, they, yeah, we, know. Everybody knows the Goonies. Almost, uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> like, everybody I'm knows like, the Goonies. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's, uh, we're, we're located about 10 miles from Astoria. Okay, that's cool, kind of, cool. Like, that's, that's where we sell a lot of our chicken, which is one of the th three main things that we sell on the farm. Yeah. So we do, um, in the past, we've done poultry, uh, both chickens and turkeys. Uh, we do produce. Uh, we have three acres of produce, berries, and fruit trees. And then we also do a nursery business, which Andrew is primarily the, the lead on the nursery business. And out of the 31 acres, we can use about a dozen acres. Yeah. Uh, it's a farm that's been there since 1872, more or less. The farmhouse was built in 1884. Wait, is the farmhouse where you live right now? The farmhouse is not where we live. Oh, okay, okay. But it's, but <laughs> it's, but it's, it's 18, no, well, that place it's still, is it's, haunted good, it's right? Still yeah. standing. It's still, yeah. still oh, yeah. standing. It is. Well, oh, we yeah, just yeah. haven't had time to remodel it yet. Oh, so, so eventually you think you'll live in that house. It was Absolutely. part of our five-year plan. Yeah. 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 yeah we're, <laughs> we, bought the, we bought the farm five years and three days ago, and yeah. that's why she's mentioning the five-year plan. Oh, she's we, letting you know. Yeah, we right? didn't quite get there. Hey, people. Well, yeah. When we were we went to look at this place, which is a whole story, but he's out in the fields digging dirt, and I'm standing in this old farmhouse, like hoping the floor doesn't collapse, going, yeah. oh, I want to live here. And guess what we did first? For soil <laughs> I'm taking soil samples. <laughs> I'm waiting. And about, not, not so patiently. Waiting. About 20 <laughs> times during this process, my brother um, was around on the farm as well. We had no intention of doing whatever they were doing, but they kept asking <laughs> us, like, you know, if if you think this is really crazy, let us know because. You know, the electricity was turned off. When they turned on the water line, which was about a quarter mile long, they discovered that there was a leak somewhere <laughs> in the water line that was a quarter mile long. They didn't know where. So it's like the water line connected to the main water line, but somewhere in between there. Well, yes. Well, the, the little part we didn't throw in here is it had been abandoned for 15 years when we looked at the place. So was it, it had been empty for 15 years? Empty yeah. for 15 Completely. years. Yeah. So, to get back to the name of Blackberry Bog Farm, yeah. I said it's 31 acres, but we can only use 12. That's yeah. because the remainder is is wetlands. It's swamp. It's a bog. Yeah, yeah. And in 15 years in Clatsop County, Oregon, if you don't do anything, the blackberries take over. Wild blackberries. 
We had blackberries 30 feet into the trees. We have, I mean, wow. it was just it consumed buildings. Yeah. We, there were buildings that we didn't know were there until whole weeks outhouse. after we'd moved on. What? Yeah. A two-seater outhouse, no less, which wait, wait. there's a whole other <laughs> thing there, too. A two-seater outhouse covered in blackberries. Yeah, our bushes. son found it yeah. with an excavator when he just about fell into the, the hole. The hole. Yeah. We, we had no idea it was there. Fortunately, <laughs> those, it was quick and knew what to do. Yeah. <laughs> those blackberries are calling. Come here, come here. <laughs> Sucking you in. Follow, yeah. follow you into the, yeah. the two-seater outhouse oh, it was very like nice it had windows it had, had windows. windows it was all lined with feed sacks and flower bags but you really have to like the person you know, sitting next to you you have to be really good friends no, nobody nobody i can't think of how that would even happen no. like you're both together you're like hey I know. it's time are you feeling it right now because i am I have no idea and no one i care about that much <laughs> They can wait. <laughs> but it was, it's completely, because uh, when you say the blackberries take over, I'm like, that's delicious. Like, oh. I just, oh, no. I don't oh. think of, oh, no, like, this is an like, infestation type of thing. This is like, you can't, you, can't, you can't see 20 feet away. This yeah. is like, you can't walk through them. They're, 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 it's tw they're 20 feet high. They're, they're, they're impenetrable. They're this big around, and you can't, like, you're no. out there with a, well, with wait, the blackberries are that big? No, the, no, the, no, the, the stems. The, the, the stems. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, the thorns are probably, you know, half an inch long. And if you fell in, you would not extricate yourself. You yeah. would not be able to get out. You would not out. be able to get out. We yeah. spent a day just <laughs> trying to clear a path around the house through the blackberries. What? There was yeah. a whole basement we didn't know about because we couldn't get to it because there were so many blackberries that... And right from now, either direction. Why we bought this place? So obviously, <laughs> I'm totally uh, obviously we bought this as is. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So what is it? What is it like going? So, so had that nobody had been in the house? Was the house empty no. when you moved in? No, the no. toothbrushes and toothpaste were still there. There was applesauce that was canned in 1985. There was like, a so for freezer. 15 years, the stuff was it just, just sat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a freezer on the back porch that had blueberries from 67 in it that were obviously not frozen at that point. Yeah, they were kind of, it was, it was an interesting sugar process. Sugar in the sugar point. bowl. I mean, it's, it was yeah. creepy. Really? It was creepy. Yeah. That is creepy. Yeah. Yeah. I've always wanted to be a farmer. I grew up in farm country. My, yeah. my dad and my granddad were farmers. Yeah. And life happened and it just didn't, it, you know, it didn't come together. And yeah. then things kind of came together really well. And this, we, we found this place and it needed a lot of work, but it was this blank slate. We could do what we wanted to. But we didn't really know what we wanted to do. Right. So our first or very first summer there, we did almost exclusively cut flowers. And we have an elk herd that had kind of taken up residence on the farm in the 15 years it had been abandoned. Yeah. And so we had we, anything that we want to grow the elk like, which is pretty much everything, we have to put behind a seven foot fence. So we built a seven-foot fence. We grew cut flowers in it. We started doing a farmer's market. Yeah. Did almost exclusively cut flowers that first year. Yep. Yeah. And um, they went well. Yeah. And, you know, we had some extra flower starts. We started our own seeds on yeah. a piece of plywood in front of the window of our rental. Wow. Before we moved out. Yeah. Yep. And then we built one little greenhouse from PVC pipe. And, you know, now we have six greenhouses. And, yeah. you know, it's a different thing. But I found that people also would buy the plant starts for the flowers. It's like, oh, oh. So the next year... We got this idea of, oh, you know, we nice. do some nursery things. Yeah. But then that first winter, as we're looking for markets and we're looking for places to sell things, there is a, a food hub kind of organization there in Clatsop County that, yeah. that hooks up chefs with farms. Yeah. And it was a meeting. It was February 8th. I kept the notes because there was a new executive chef at Fort George Brewery in Astoria, which is fairly well known through the Northwest. Yeah, yeah. And you can buy the beer here. Yeah. The Fort George beer. And... Um, He's new. He's only been there for about a month, and he stands up to all of us farmers and he says, "Hey, I'd like to buy some local chicken. Does anybody around here raise chickens?" <laughs> no. <laughs> no one. And he sits down. He's like, "Oh, okay. I guess not." <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I went up to him afterwards and changed um, their lives. Changed their lives. Yeah, changed the, the the trajectory of the farm. I mean, no way. We, we didn't we didn't know what we wanted to grow. Yeah. And then we've had a chef come to us and say, oh, "I'll pay you to." Raise chickens that, for me. That, that's perfect. And that's I'll give you money. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you money okay. to, to okay. do this. Yeah, give you money. Yeah. We, the, the question was not, can we raise them? The question is, how do you process them in accordance with state or federal law so you. you can sell them to a restaurant? Yeah, yeah, Because I can yeah, sell them yeah. to you as an individual. That's easy to do yeah, in Oregon. Yeah, yeah. It's not easy to sell them to a restaurant. Yeah. So we looked at different options for what we might do. Do we put them into a, a trailer and, and cart them two and a half hours to the closest licensed right, facility? Right, right, right. Or do we start our own? Do we oh, build our own oh licensed boy. facility? Oh boy. All right, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Yes. Don't tell me yet. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell me yet. First, 
Sarah. <laughs> this is like good timing. Alcohol. We just got to the good time. Would you like some alcohol? For now you're ready for alcohol. Now we're ready for drinks. What are, what, are we, what are we drinking? So this is a cocktail called the Red Dawn for the amazing Patrick Swayze movie. It's got a little bit of lime juice, some hibiscus, got some coconut cream, tequila, and a little bit of mezcal. And garnish with a little bit of a coconut smile. I was gonna do blackberry, but I thought you guys were probably sick of that. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's the right color. Here's some blackberries. So it's totally changed my perception of blackberries. Um, like I grew up with raspberries, or I would see yeah, yeah. wild blackberries in the uh, kind of in certain areas of the mountains and things like that. But you guys have turned them into like the demogorgon. Like it's just like this tentacled monster. <laughs> oh, they're terrifying. That oh comes gosh. out and grabs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can yeah. tell by your faces. Oh. Yeah. We got goats and um, we had these just massive, yeah. I don't even know what to call them, hills of blackberries. And so what we'd do is we had, I think, a 12 foot uh, two by six that we would stand up oh. on end and drop down into the blackberries so that the goats could climb up them. Huh? And get to somewhat so in the climb center. Climb up to them and then yeah. Yeah. their way out. And then eat them. Yeah. Yeah, basically. yeah, and so yeah. this ten foot board, I mean, you'd have to do it from both sides because it would barely reach into the middle. So it's just Dang. like a, a huge mass. I love you're using the goats. Like, just put them in. Oh, they, they loved it. They, they love they blackberries. They make little trails through them. They do, really? Yeah. 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 All right, well, tell then, us. then cheers. Cheers, cheers. Oh, cheers. yeah. There we go. I didn't think I got you. That's tasty. Tangy. Nice. Oh, yeah, it is a good Doesn't experience. Does it make you feel like you should be on a beach, though? Yeah, it makes it's, you want to be on a beach. It's, yeah, it's, like a, it's kind of like a coconut margarita. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you get to the point. By the way, we're going to talk about why y'all are crazy. Still, we got to come back. Oh, we'll come back, back to that. Absolutely, yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah, but we got to get to the. You, instead of uh, sending them to a facility yes. um, to be slaughtered, you decided to build it ourselves and you built it we built a we built a a chicken and i believe that the 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 licensing term from the state of oregon yeah. is a is a rabbit and poultry slaughter license rabbit and poultry yes. yep no yes. way yeah so we built a licensed state licensed facility yeah which means we can't sell interstate so we can't sell to washington right. but we can sell within oregon yeah and uh we can do up to twenty thousand birds a year wow you make it sound like we knew what we were doing yeah. We spent a lot of time working on we it. We spent you know, a lot of time. Our chickens can walk. They roam around and do chicken things. And Freedom have, Rangers. Yeah, Freedom Wait, what, Rangers. What are the... Well, we, 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 we raise them on pasture. Yeah. So they're out in the so field. So those are real so, Freedom I mean, Rangers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not yeah. like the... Let's just pull the like the little. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they go as far as they want. They go as they far as they want. Yeah. 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 Well, Freedom Rangers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Occasionally, we'll have to go rescue one out of the woods. Yeah. Or the blackberries. It gets stuck on the other side. Yeah. Gets yeah. stuck on the other side of the fence, falls into a hole. <laughs> Those yeah. are the chicken things. Yeah. The yeah. said chicken things. Because you're like, they go off and do chicken things. Yeah, I'm they like, do. Oh, they what fight, are chicken they things? They fight and they eat yeah. bugs and they eat seeds. And Flap around, yeah. dust baths. Oh, yeah, dust baths. Yeah. Big holes and dust baths. <laughs> I don't know anything. Yeah. So when I met Scott, mm -hmm. I had never even gardened in my life. Yeah. Like, I, City kid. City kid. My dad was in the Navy. We yeah. lived in Navy bases or close to him all over the country. I do remember when we were dating him mentioning that he wanted to to have a farm someday. In fact, we had a book that he showed me about what he wanted to look like. So yeah. I think one of About my, what he wanted to look like what or what he wanted his life to look like? What he wanted the farm to look like. Oh, okay. Like. I thought he was showing you pictures of himself, like no. other farmers, <laughs> no, right? No, he wanted like, the farm to look like. Look at this. Like. This is what it looks like. Foxfire. Yeah, that's, it, yeah. It yeah. sounded so simple. I actually did one of my, my um, undergraduate uh, business because I have a business degree in business, and I had done one of my uh, classes to build a business plan for this farm that he wanted. I yeah. had no idea what I was doing at the time. So he, we've been talking about this. At the point we finally found the farm, it had been, what, 28 years since we'd met? Yeah, about that, yeah. And so we've been talking about it, and well, we'd had the five acres in Silverdale, but that was really truly a hobby. Like, we were both working, and we did this stuff on the weekends. And, yeah. Um, so I, I had no idea. I mean, one of my first memories of us actually out farming was planting the flowers, and I'm out, I've gardened, you know, since we got married. I'm out putting the plants in and tucking them in and wanting to water them, and he's looking at me, shaking his head. He says, Bonnie, this is not gardening. I'm like, what do you mean? You plant the plant, right? Yeah. He's like, no, 
pick, make a hole, stick it in, make a hole, stick it in. <laughs> I'm just sitting here going. We, we've got 500 plants. So I know. We plant. and I was like, <laughs> I'm like, this wasn't what I bargained for. I'm like, I want to make it all pretty. And I want, you know, and I've got pictures of like, you know, when you see the gardening shows and they've got the nice round gardens with yeah. the very gorgeous. And he's like looking at me like, how are we going to run a rototiller up and down a round guy? We had a lot of adjusting to do between my vision of living on a farm yeah. and Scott's vision of farming. Yeah, They're yeah, very yeah, yeah, different yeah, yeah, things. Yeah. Why would you want to do this? Like, I mean, we to go to... into that life and that well, type of stuff, like you've got you've got a master's, you're going around the country, you're <laughs> teaching, you obviously got something fine that's totally yeah, cool. Why do we want to do this? Yeah, you could fully like <laughs> like did you ever have a moment like where you're like, no, we should probably go back to what we were doing? No, never. Never. Actually, never. Daily. Daily. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this isn't even an exaggeration. Yeah. Never. No. Um, to me, it's so much of a privilege because it's something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. And to be able to have someone who works off farm yeah. help support my addiction to farming and enable me in this this pursuit. And enabling can be a bad thing. Well, too, like addiction, <laughs> enabling. All right, keep going. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, but it's something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. And and even as a kid, when I would work on neighborhood farms, it, it's like this is this is great. I mean, I'm I'm able to work outside. I'm able to use. I'm able to use my brain because yeah. there's a lot of planning. There's a lot of strategizing from marketing, but also just how to how to work with things, get them to grow well. Yeah, and we're still working on that. I mean, we've only been doing this for for five seasons. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. still a lot more learning to go, but um, it's to me, it's a privilege to be able to grow things for my neighbors. Yeah, yeah, and to make that good food accessible so people come to us. We started a CSA last year. Yeah, so community supported See, agriculture. Oh, okay. So a basket yeah. of food, half bushel. People pay in the springtime. It's our seed money, literally. Yeah. And then every week, we so you give have them to grow. You have to grow variety then. Variety. Oh, we, well, how many how many right. things do we grow, Andrew? How many varieties of plants? Oh gosh, last time I checked, I have an Excel spreadsheet. Um, <laughs> He's got a lot. He's good. I have a lot of Excel spreadsheets. Last time I checked, yeah. uh, there were seven hundred. Well, this is like last spring. Okay. There were seven hundred and ninety-one varieties. Varieties of things that you're growing. That, grow that right doesn't in, that doesn't even count. Like we have two hundred and ah, about two hundred different varieties of dahlias, which is a, a cup flower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Google Maps prompted us to open a pumpkin patch last oh, year. Yeah. Wait, how did it prompt you to open up a pumpkin patch? So the local paper um, was doing a, some sort of a special on how, around Halloween about where you could buy pumpkins. Yeah. Two years ago. Two well, years ago. Well, three years ago now. It was yeah, the yeah, fall yeah. of yeah. 2017. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so we had a little stand at the end of the driveway with just some pumpkins <laughs> and a self-serve. You could just put money in and take a pumpkin. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe 15 pumpkins. Oh, yeah. I mean, Somehow, from that article, Google Maps picked up that we sold pumpkins. Oh, so and no, we had a pumpkin patch. That we had a pumpkin patch. So the next year, 2018 we now, families showing up with kids all excited at our farm to go to the pumpkin patch. And we're talk here. about horrible. It's like, we're, we're here. And you're like, <laughs> we have some blackberries oh. for you. <laughs> it's like, oh, this it's is so from sad. Coming Portland, it's like a two-hour yeah. drive, and they just typed into Google pumpkin patch. Pumpkin patch near our like, story. It's like, oh, let's go Sunday afternoon. No. Yeah. First yeah, thing, it was blackberry so by the farm. Way. Yeah, it was so yeah. sad. So then we started talking with um, one of the local feed store owners and somebody that had a lot right off of Highway 30. And we're like, well, we could grow the pumpkins and kind of help run the pumpkin patch, but we don't have enough parking or anything. And yeah. the feed store owner's like, well, I've got parking. So this last year we did a pumpkin patch with a kind of a community pumpkin no patch. Way. And Every weekend in October. Yep. Saturdays and Sundays. And we had some preschools come on weekdays. And yeah. we probably had... 3,000 people I don't show know up. How you guys are pulling this off. <laughs> I know that there are people that are watching that think about doing this yeah. and want to do this. And it's something that's really important to them yep. to do the same sort of thing. Like, what would you recommend? What would you, what would be your advice? I've got, I've got an answer. Oh, well, I've, I've like probably got a very too. different one. So, so oh, my, well, good. Well, we'll get both. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, um, Find find a find a patron, find a supporter. Yeah. Um, someone who who has that same desire. Yeah. And can provide support, which may include financial support, yeah. or find a, a farmer who's getting ready to retire. Oh. And team with them. There's an expectation, amongst at least farmers my age, I think, that it's not just a job. Mm -hmm. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. It is a, you know you're it's a it's a chosen profession. It's yeah. a, it needs to be a passion. Yeah. You're not gonna it, it, it. I would have trouble supporting someone who came in and wanted to take over the farm. And running it like a business is fine, but to me it's more than just a business. Mm -hmm. 
It's a lifestyle as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, you know, that yeah. makes sense. What, what's your advice? I, I think that's true, except for I, I was, there's so many things that surprised me. One, it, you're all in. Like, you can't just, I mean, even just for us to get up here. Yeah. I mean, thankfully, Andrew's got an amazing girlfriend who's house sitting for us because we cannot get away from the farm. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Just, yeah. We can't just. Well, house sitting <coughs> means feeding the cows, feeding the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not, not just, like just you laying know, there and taking pictures, pictures yeah, like yeah. farm yeah. life on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. You're out at night with a headlamp on, going through the rain to get the dog and check on the cows. I mean, it's just, I think, I, I didn't realize that. Like, yeah. I think I had some sort of a vision of it being, you know, oh, this will be nice. The season will be over. And it's never done. Yeah. Um, and then I grew up where you got a paycheck. So you went to work and you got a yeah. paycheck. Well, for farming, we have to pay all this money out and then hope and pray <laughs> that we're going to get it back plus a little bit extra. Yeah. And that's a really different way of living for a lot of people yeah. anymore. You, like, you really had to just trust that it was going to work out okay. And so part of being diversified that's nice is even because yeah. every year we have something that just does not work. Yeah. We don't, we aren't really susceptible to that for the most part. Because you diversify so, what you're we working diversified. on things like that. All right, the question's about your beard. Fine, it's about uh, your beard. <laughs> like, I know, it's amazing. Don't get me, like, but I'm like, I haven't seen a beard like that in a long time. Like, uh, that's just aren't in the right spots in the country. Right, well, that's what I'm wondering. Have you always had the beard? No, thank no. goodness. Well, no, I, thank goodness. <laughs> so when we Sorry. met, when we met, I was in the military. I could not have a beard. Because yeah. False of advertising, I'm telling you. So this is, like, <laughs> but well, Bob very, Ross was in the but military. Very, but very, so. soon, very soon after that, we moved to Alaska in fact yeah. both of our kids are born in Alaska and so in Alaska it's cold for yeah. about 13 months out of the year oh stop it yeah, that cannot be the excuse <laughs> yeah. and well for so, a beard oh no yeah. I mean, it keeps your face warm so I had a beard <laughs> I had a beard for years years and years mm -hmm. yeah and then um, when we moved back outside if you will to the lower 48 yeah um, I would typically grow a beard in the winter yeah and then I would shave it off in the summer yeah um, I grew up in western New York State, south of Buffalo Ways, yeah. a little dairy town there. And Also as, gets cold. Oh, it gets very cold. cold. Yes. Yeah. As I was growing up, um, the community started, there was started to be Amish families that were moving into the community from Ohio. Yeah. Yes. And they are wonderful members of the community. Yeah. And um, some inspiration for this has come from, from that. From, from yeah, that. Yes. that makes sense. Yeah. And it's not turkey processing time or chicken processing time, so he can get away so with the So you can get away with the yeah. beer. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm empty, so I'm going to do an empty cheers. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, it's pleasure. been a pleasure talking about this stuff. <laughs> uh, I still think y'all are crazy, um, but I think it's beautiful. <laughs> I, like, I, lo I, I, I love what you're doing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yeah. All right, Bonnie, Scott, and Andrew, thanks for being on the show. That was a lot of fun. I learned what chickens do when chickens have a chicken life, which is really beautiful, actually. If you like what you saw and you want to hear more about things like chickens, then uh, subscribe, ring the bell. And if you also have a fuck up or you want to talk about it, then go to fups.com. We'd love to have you on the show.